What's going on guys and welcome back to another Jeep CJ7 episode. Now in the last episode, we were able to get some of the hardware that we needed and we went ahead and replaced everything in the rear brakes. So now we have a parking brake, but we had some electrical issues. Now these electrical issues ultimately ended up leaving us with a crank, but no start. We hooked up a battery tender to the battery and we think that we might have fried the coil because there isn't a proper ground. We did not get to the rear main seal, which is still leaking, the rear diff that needs to be serviced, as well as the front diff that needs to be serviced. But before I can start, I need to go to the auto parts store to collect a few more things to work on this Jeep. All right guys, so I'm leaving O'Reilly's now and I got a new uh, Blue Street coil uh, for the Jeep, as well as some other small things that I needed, some high temp uh, oil resistant RTV or gasket maker. And as for the uh, rear main seal, once we put that together, uh, I needed some razor blades to clean off the old gasket on the front and rear diff covers. And I finally got myself a test light because it's gonna make it way easier to diagnose this no start problem. And it's an old school way, uh, things gonna work. Last thing I got was a new small set of these uh, Torx bits because the Jeep has a lot of them, uh, more than I've ever had to deal with. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace the ones that I'm missing and the ones that I don't have. And almost everything that I've touched so far has required a Torx. So definitely handy to have these for the Jeep. All right guys, that should be everything I need to complete these services on the Jeep. Once I complete these services, the front diff, the rear diff, the rear main seal, and this oil change, I'll start diving back into this crank no start situation that we're having. So let's get back to the house. All right guys, first thing I did was remove the rear fill plug because if it doesn't come out, I can't refill the diff. Then I removed all the Torx bolts one by one, hoping that they would not strip out. All right, so we have the uh, rear diff cover and it's quite nasty, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. Get myself a little brush here. That way we get a nice seal and we put everything back together. So as you can see, I used some regular paper towels to get most of the gunk um, that I could off of the uh, rear diff cover. Uh, once I was done with this, I actually used some WD-40 to give it a final wipe down. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure there was nothing that would interfere with the gasket and the mating service. Once I finished that, I took my straight edge and I cleaned up any leftover gasket that was stuck onto the face of the rear diff. Now to prep the gasket, I used some of this uh, Mega Black RTV. It's also oil resistant. You don't want to cover the whole gasket in it, just enough so it's tacky and it doesn't fall off when you're putting on the rear diff cover. You can see here that I place it up and it stays right in place. There's a small groove for it to sit in and it holds it. So you can put your cover on and then start uh, putting in the screws by hand. Now, if you're doing this job by yourself, uh, the best thing you can do is hand tighten them as you see me doing right here. And then as you start tightening them by hand, you wanna make sure you do it in a star pattern. And before you finish everything off, you wanna get yourself a torque wrench and make sure you torque them all to spec. Now, another thing I want to point out is that I re I did reuse the uh, old hardware, but I read on the forums that a lot of people replaced these with some stainless steel or some grade eight uh, hex head bolts because these star head bolts tend to strip out and they just get really weak over time. So in the future, I do plan on changing these out to a hex head type bolt, uh, something that I won't worry about shearing off if I ever need to do the service again. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the most important thing to do is to make sure you torque your bolts. I used uh, Lucas Oil Synthetic 7590 Gear Oil. Uh, I use Lucas Oil products in my Challenger for racing. Uh, it's really good products. This is not endorsed, so I figured uh, it would be best to use the same products I use in my Challenger uh, and use them in the Jeep. So now that we finished the rear diff, all we got to do is do the same exact thing for the front diff. I also want to point out that these axles were reused from the original 83 CJ7 that we purchased. So one thing we wanted to make sure was that the Jeep didn't see any water or submerged in mud. So that's why it's important to check the fluid and more importantly, check the gears 
and you'll see me here uh, as I start prying on this. The fluid looks pretty dirty. Um, one thing I was worried about was really the gears, uh, but everything turned out okay. The front diff uh, did have more of the gasket stuck on, but other than that, pretty simple job. Everything slips right out. This is why I'm changing the fluid because it is really gunked up. It's not metallic. Uh, there's no like, it's not like when you change out trans fluid and you see all the clutch pack material. It's just like the fluid is so old, it's breaking down and it stinks. I'm feeling through the fluid just in case there's a broken tooth that I can't see or anything, but the gears look, I mean, they look perfect. Everything looks great. Really happy. All right, so I was doing some reading on some of the Jeep forms, and it turns out that the ignition module or the ignition control module can sometimes be really faulty and cause this no start problem. There's a modification that a lot of Jeep people do, and it's called the nutter technique, and you pretty much bypass that control module and the Jeeps tend to start faster and even get better gas mileage. But I don't believe in starting to cut up the wiring harness and making this like some kind of splice job, no offense to anybody out there, um, because in the history of all the CJ7s we have owned, we've never had to do that. So we really think that it's that uh, ignition module. Now I just went to the auto parts store and neither O'Reilly's, AutoZone or Advanced had any in stock. And then they had two different versions where it was a two wire and a three wire. So either way, I'm gonna have to order it. So I figured, let me go ahead and remove the uh, engine coolant reservoir and get that module out there so I can order the correct one. All right, so I was able to pull the ignition module out. Uh, we think that's gonna be the cause of our problem. I went to go find one, but no auto parts store really carries them in stock and I have to order it. And the other problem I ran into was whether it was a two plug or a three plug. Uh, ours is a two plug. I see a little corrosion on these connectors. It's actually pretty bad. So I'm just going to be happy to replace this thing anyway. So before I set out and ordered an ignition module from Quadratech, I decided to test out my coil theory and replace the coil with the new one and hook everything back up and hook the battery up to uh, the charger and see if the Jeep would start. Now with the battery hooked up and the new coil hooked up, we still had no start. All right guys, it's been a while since I've actually been working on the Jeep. And the last time we left off, I started to remove the oil pan so I can fix the rear main seal. And what took me so long is that I had to get this car ready. So if you've been keeping up with the channel, you know that it's been quite a while because I finished the car getting it painted and assembled. But today didn't really go as planned because I just finished removing that rear main cap. And what I found is it's not really good. Um, it looks like the corners on it, you see right there, uh, they're chipped on both sides. And then upon further inspection, it looks like it was dropped and it's cracked right there. Uh, so that's not, not a good sign. Uh, the seal itself actually looks fine. Um, but it was just that that rear main cap is cracked like that. I'll probably go ahead and shimmy the oil pan back on with a couple bolts just to keep everything uh, clean and free of debris, grass, dirt, anything like that. Um, but this would have been done today, um, but it's just not gonna happen. So Teddy here, he's been holding uh, holding it down in the Jeep. He's got the new gaskets and uh, I think he was hoping that we could get this thing running and uh, sealed up today, but that's about as far as I'm gonna get uh, today's video. I need to go ahead and get the module to start the Jeep. Hopefully that fixes that problem. And before we even get to that, now I have to finish this rear main seal job. Uh, so if you guys are enjoying these videos, if you're enjoying my Jeep adventures, which they haven't really started yet because Jeep's not running, um, I appreciate the support. If you guys like these videos, leave a comment below, hit that like button. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button because in the future, we're going off-roading and you guys don't want to miss it. Till next time guys, peace. Yeah.